Marketing a business is so much easier when you have a plan. So let's talk about the elements that you absolutely need to have in place when you're marketing a plumbing company like yours. Is this everything that you need to do? No. Is this a really good start? Hell yeah. And we're gonna drop a whole bunch of links in the description that'll help you get started if I mention a place to go. So let's go. Okay, so first thing you gotta do is get your business found, which means there's some things that you need to put in place for people to find you. Otherwise, it doesn't matter what you do, any generation of traffic, any advertising you do will fall on deaf ears. So let's go over that. Okay, so the first thing you gotta do is get a URL. Make it simple, make it um, as short as you can, but try to avoid things like dashes or abbreviations or anything that feels clever because they're harder to remember. You don't want the vanity license plate where people are going like, what does that really mean when it comes to your URL? Make it as simple for the user as possible because it's gonna affect a lot of your business for a long time. Second, get an email and not like bobsplumbing at gmail.com. Use the URL that you just bought to get a real URL that builds credibility for your business. It should be like bob at bobsplumbing.com and make sure you also get like an info or business or services um, at bobsplumbing.com as well. Set those things up so that way you have them ready for the future because you want to be better than a freelancer. You want to be a real business, get yourself a real email. Okay, now get yourself a website. Wherever you buy your URL, typically they have a website builder. It's like baby's first builder. Just go ahead and use it. Build out yourself a homepage, an about page, a contact page, and a services page. But the other thing you're gonna to need to do is start building out pages for each one of your services individually on that page. There's so much to web Websites, but this will set you up with a good start. And as you are building out all that stuff for your website, make sure you go to business.google.com and get yourself a Google business listing. Not optional, not a nice to have. It is an absolute necessary function of business today. It is just as important as your address or your web domain. So make sure that you own it and control it. It takes time to get the verification done. So you probably should start that yesterday. And I know that this is an ads thing, which we'll talk about later, but go and search for Google local service ads and make sure that you have applied for that as well, because it's another thing that's going to take a lot of verification because there's background checks and things like that, but it ends up being one of the cheapest ways to run ads. So by all means, search it, Google local service ads, and then set your account up for that and get that process started. And now here's another little fun tidbit. All the social media platforms that you've been avoiding for the past five years, go get yourself some accounts. You're going to love it. Use your business account if you can, because then it's tied to the business and it's like not really your you personally. Um, and with Facebook, you have to have a personal account before you can have a business account. So I have a list here and we're going to go over this because it's too much for me to remember. You're going to want to make sure that you go to, oh, I don't have a list. Okay. So I don't have a list here. But what I do know is that you're going to want to create your accounts and then go to Facebook uh, business.facebook.com and create a business manager account. Get yourself an Instagram account. Get yourself a TikTok account. Make sure that you've got professional or business accounts on all of these if they have them available, because even if you don't utilize it yourself, somebody's on that network and they might want your services. And about all those social media accounts, start posting content twice a day if you can. But really the other thing, and I have a note here for myself, ask your mom to share your content. Ask your kids to share your content. Ask your mom's friends to share your content. Ask your kids' friends to share your content. Ask your kids' friends' parents to share your content. Anybody, their teachers, school, like principal, I don't care. The more people who share your content organically, the better that your business is going to do in the early days. Now, we'll talk about ads in just a minute. Okay, so now you have a place for people to land. Your business can be found and people can interact with it on the internet. Congratulations, you have opened the door to both the wonderful things of the internet and the terrible things of the internet. Guess what? That's business in 2023, so that's what you're gonna do. Um, now, let's get started on advertising. Okay, great. Now you are ready to actually run ads, which opens up a new door that is gonna be amazing for your business. So the thing to keep in mind though, is a lot of people will start with social ads. Don't start with social ads. You need money today. You start with things that lead to jobs immediately. That starts with Google local service ads, which is why I had you set up an account and get verified. 
So these ads are some of the cheapest that you can get per contact, but you have to realize that you will get good and bad contacts. Use the Google system in order to manage those leads all the way through to asking for a review. Google wants that in order to know that you're taking care of their customers. Then you can start on the other side of lead generation ads called Google search ads. Now, be very careful when you set this up, monitor it very closely because your ads can get squirrely very, very easy if you don't know what you're doing. And you probably won't know what you're doing straight out of the gate. Start by adding keywords, but don't add too many and make sure that you're using phrase or exact match with your keywords. Fill out everything else to the best of your ability and you'll start running ads there, hopefully getting clicks to your website and form fills and calls. And then you get to do Facebook ads. Now I give you permission to do what we call brand awareness, which is where you're serving ads out into the marketplace. Facebook is amazing at this. Google has the ways to do it with YouTube and display ads as well, but start with social, keep it simple, post a bunch of content, boost that content, and then start measuring your frequency and your uh, reach within those campaigns. Try and reach an audience within 14 to 21 times in a given month. That is your frequency rate, which you can find in the reporting. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you're not reaching that, you can do two things. You can narrow your target, like say, go for homeowners instead of just anyone, which I would recommend anyway. Like you can also narrow in your geography just to a neighborhood. The other thing is you can always up your budget. Buying more eyeballs is never a bad thing if those eyeballs help you get more work. So that is Facebook ads. I highly recommend you utilize them. They will serve on both Facebook and Instagram. There's a lot to those as well, but you're gonna need them. So get started. And then you get to do something extremely cool. It's called retargeting. And it's a, it's a little complicated to get set up, but basically if anybody interacts with your ads, goes to your website, anything like that, you're gonna follow them around the internet, much like Amazon does whenever you search a product on their website. It is when people started thinking that their phone was listening to them, it was actually retargeting. And you can utilize it too. And what it does is it helps people feel like you are everywhere, which increases their trust factor in your company. So plumbers, do this, it's great. Build omnipresence in the mind of your potential customer. Uh, and that's pretty much that. Let's talk about how what you gotta do for reviews though, because that's a whole nother thing about marketing. Okay, at this point, you should be getting jobs, which means that you're starting to get reviews. Reviews are extremely important. They affect so much of how you show up in maps and SEO rankings, and of course, whether or not people want to do business with you in the first place. So with your reviews, let me give you a very helpful hint. Respond to all of them, except the bad ones with the good ones. If you get too many bad ones, you got a service problem. You got something else going on. And you need to dive into that. If you get a bunch of good ones with a smattering of bad ones, here's something cool about the bad ones. If you respond to the bad ones and you try and move that conversation offline, 99% of the time, you're gonna diffuse the situation. You can get that review taken off of the platform if you need it. If you cannot, it also shows that other people know that you have a support line. So if they are working with your business, you are caring enough about the bad experience, which tells them that if something goes wrong, you're gonna help them out. That is extremely important. So reviews, also Google doesn't care so much about the star rating, but they care a lot about the flow. Ask for a review, and if they don't leave you one, you ask again. If they don't leave you one then, you ask again. Ask up to four times, then you can leave them alone. Then move on to the next person but ask more than once. Reviews are so vital these days on your Google business listing to getting you work. So I have some other really good news. I sat down and was like, what are some things that people don't know they should be doing when they're doing? So I got a few extra tips as far as marketing for a plumbing company. Here we go. These are gonna go fast if I have them up. There we go. If it's slow, send out an email to your existing customers saying like, hey, you know what? Thank you for being a loyal customer. If you need us, here's five to 10% off your next service. You can also do this to get 
old customers back in the fold if they haven't used you in a while. Ooh, I love this one. I call it parketing. Somebody else coined that term. I wish it was me. I would like to have all the credit for it, but it's great. If you have a wrapped van, go ahead and park it in a neighborhood or in a high traffic area around your service area. So that way you can actually get those customers. They're gonna see your van. It's a big billboard basically. So if you've got paperwork to do, which no one likes to do, go park in a place where you're actually advertising and doing your paperwork at the same time. I love it, it's easy, it's simple. And here's a new one. You can talk to homeowners associations to say, hey, can I be a preferred vendor? So go seek out those homeowners associations to see if you can get into their homes to do small repairs like leaks, uh, you know, changes in a sink, things like that. Oh, another parketing one that I really like is if you have kids, you might have kids in sports. If you have kids in sports, go to all their games with your marked van, with any sort of, like do yourself up in the uniform. So that way, all those other parents who probably also have homes are going to think of you when they need your help. And still along those same lines is this concept of parketing, except go to the grocery store wearing your work clothes. It's not that hard. Like, and go, instead of like trying to go at like 7 a.m. because there's no lines, no, go when there's lines. The more eyeballs on your business, the better. So if you are uniformed up and you got a van in the parking lot, guess what? Oh, I just saw one of our, one of our clients' vans go by. Ha, see, parking, that, that's why the vans. Make sure your vans are visible at the grocery store. Okay, and here's the big one. Realize that marketing is a snowball. If you start rolling that snowball down the hill, it's gonna grow and grow and grow and grow. And then you're gonna point it at a customer and that customer is gonna be stuck with you for five to 10 years because no one can escape a snowball. That's most of my tips. Now let's talk about what you need to do if, you know, this all seems a little overwhelming. You see that sign behind me? Here's the cool thing about a marketing agency. We exist to serve plumbers just like you. So if all of this stuff seems really hard and really complex, I do free consults and I would be happy to just sit down and talk you through what I think your business needs if you are at a stage of starting up or if you've been around a while and have some of the stuff in play, the other steps that you can take that are a bit more advanced. So we do this for free, no obligation to buy anything. I do it because it helps me learn the market and of course gets my name out there but I also want to see businesses succeed better. A lot of plumbers are struggling in, in ways that they don't have to, and I don't want it to be you. So go to mammothforplumbers.com and you can schedule a consult with me. I'll see you there. Thanks.